Hello friends, now we will be seeing a topic that is spinal trauma. So before going into detail, I would like to thank Chandana Shri ma'am for sharing these wonderful notes with us which are very helpful for quick revision. And the link for the notes is given in the description below, you can download it from there. So without further delay, let's get started. So before starting, just see about the quickly about the basic anatomy that is the spinal cord, the ligaments and the vertebras. So these are the vertebral bodies and anterior to the vertebral body is the anterior longitudinal ligament and behind them is the posterior longitudinal ligament. In between the vertebral body is the intervertebral disc which has nucleus pulcoposus in between and the posterior aspect of the vertebral body is the pedicle which is attached posteriorly by the spinous process, laterally by the transverse process and the transverse process has articular surface for the ribs. The pedicles and the transverse uh, spinous process have superior and inferior articular surfaces for the facial vertebral joint facets for the vertebral joint and just anteriorly to the uh, spinal uh, just posterior to the spinal column is the ligamentum flavum and behind that is the intertransverse ligament posteriorly is the interspinous ligament and Lastly, there is supraspinous ligament. So this is all about the basic anatomy of the vertebras and the spine and spinal cord is just anterior to the ligamentum flavum. Then considering the vertebras we have seven cervical vertebras 12 thoracic 5 lumbar 5 sacral and 4 coccygeal the sacral and coccygeal joint fuse and totally we have 33 vertebra the spinal level and the vertebral level in the upper cervical it is same in the lower cervical it is the spinal level The lower cervical spinal level the vertebral level is spinal level minus one in the upper thoracic the vertebral level is, is spinal level minus two and in the lower thoracic it is spinal level minus three in the lumbar it is spinal level minus three to five and in the sacral level the spinal level is uh, vertebral level is spinal level minus six to ten These are the much better diagram where we can see the vertebral body, the pedicles, the facet, the transverse process, the lamina and spinous process. Spinal cord extends from the foramen magnum to L1 level, L1, L2 level, the border of L1, L2 and the conus medullaris extends up to T12, L1 level. Then considering the three column model which was given by Dennis and Holdsworth, the Dennis Holdsworth spinal column concept. So considering there are three columns that is anterior column, middle column and posterior column. So the anterior two columns that is the anterior and the middle column account for the 80% stability and the posterior column which includes the lamina, the pedicle and the spinous process account for 20% stability. So if there is injury to two or more of these columns, the spine is unstable. So this is the concept. So if any of the two or more columns of these part is injured, then the spine becomes unstable. Also it will depend on the amount of injury 
then spinal trauma there could be bony injury to the vertebral body or the posterior element the processes or neurological injury to the injury to the nerve cord roots or the spinal cord the cause could be rta protraffic accident fall from height or violence the vertebral trauma most commonly occurs in 50% cases in the cervical region of which 30% is at c2 and 50% at 6 c6 and c7 level rest 50% is commonly in the 60 to 70% in the thoracolumbar vertebra that is t12 to l1 then spinal cord injury it could be primary or secondary primary we have direct and indirect indirect it could be due to penetrating trauma indirect could be due to flexion injury flexion with rotation which is the worst form flexion with distraction vertical compression and extension injury secondarily due to ischemia due to hemorrhage or associated with edema and swelling considering shock in spinal trauma so hypovolemic shock due to hemorrhage requires volume resuscitation and neurogenic shock results in either normal heart rate or bradycardia warm peripheries decreased vascular tone due to increased or unopposed vagal tone it is due to sympathetic interruption there is increased vagal tone and generally trauma is at or above the level of the sympathetic outflow so in spinal shock there is temporary physiological disorganization or block of the spinal cord function which starts within minutes of injury and can persist up to 6 weeks around 1 and a half month and there occurs paralysis hypotonia and hyporeflexia which resolves over time up to 6 weeks and the first reflex to return is bulbocavernous reflux then considering the basic management initial management that is the airway breathing and circulation which has to be taken care immobilization of the spine through the spine board and rigid cervical collar and careful transportation spinal log roll with minimum three people to help take care while removing the helmet so that no further injury is added for hypotensive cases we have to go for leg elevation and iv fluid should be added for airway we can go for nasotracheal intubation orotracheal intubation cricothyrotomy or tracheostomy in the increasing order of the necessity we are tone we are that is the anal tone if there is perianal sensation is positive that means the spinal injury is incomplete also in case of suspected cervical spine injury what are the predictors for spinal trauma if there is impaired consciousness or intoxication significant head or facial injury mechanism like fall from height and rta neck deformation or tenderness unexplained hypotension diaphragmatic breathing extremity functional neural deficit these are some of the predictors for cervical spine trauma clinical features you have to go ex examine the external injury which will be suggestive for the mechanism of trauma then spinal exam which will give us about the deformity gap step or tenderness neurological examination which will help us in assessing paralysis respiratory paralysis hemi para quadri paresis or plegia reflexes which could be either a reflexia or hyperreflexia these are some of the motor findings in the neurological examination then we have the sensory level examination autonomic functions like the bladder and the bowel function various spinal syndrome like the anterior posterior sp central spinal cord syndrome brown sequard syndrome spinal transaction syndromes which could be complete or incomplete coming to the imaging part so x-ray spine which could be ap and lateral in the lateral we will assess the pre-vertebral soft tissue swelling due to any hematoma in sagittal alignment we can see for translation or angulation 
CT will be showing bone and soft tissue changes. Myelography will show cord compression. MRI will show cord injury, which will be indicated. Which is indicated MRI is indicated when there is some neurological deficit. MRI will also show cord edema and contusion, which are the initial aspects of the injury. Now coming to the treatment. Initially, we will take care of the airway, breathing, and circulation. Then we will go for neuroprotection, which is generally not recommended nowadays. Previously, it was used as per Bracken's protocol, where we use methylprednisolone of around 30 mg per kg, especially within the initial 8 hours of injury, followed by 5.4 mg per kg as infusion for 23 hours, especially if the bolus was given within 3 hours of injury, or for 48 hours if it was given in 3 to 8 hours of injury. Then for surgery, we go for decompression, realignment and stabilization with help of orthotic devices. Rehabilitation, which is complications like the progressive neurological deficit or post-traumatic syringomyelia. These are some of the complications. Then these are some of the diagrams of the compression fracture and burst fracture, which are due to axial compression forces and chance fracture due to distracting forces or dislocation due to translation and distracting forces. Then some specific injuries like the Jefferson where there is bursting of the ring atlas of the uh, cervical spine C1. Generally surgery is not indicated. In the odontoid process fracture C2 axis protrusion Surgery is needed for widely displaced fracture. In hangman's fracture, due to hyperextension or distraction injury, it is due to the C2 pars interarticularis fracture. Only if there is spinal cord compression or failed external mobilization, we go for surgery. So this was all about spinal trauma. Hope it has been understood in simple words and will be helpful for quick revision. Thank you for watching. Keep studying, keep growing. Please like, share and subscribe. And see you in next video. Keep studying, keep growing. Never give up because great things take time. Thank you.